Hey, I don't know if you heard, but we got playoff basketball tonight, baby. And it is win or go home from the jump. The WNBA's 25th season, the playoffs kick off, t- uh, tip off tonight, excuse me. We got the Dallas Wings at the Chicago Sky, and we got the New York Liberty at the Phoenix Mercury. Single elimination mm-hmm. game in round one. Mm. Followed by the same in round two, if I'm not mistaken. And then they go to series in the semifinals and the finals. Um, to help us break this down is a very special friend of mine, an old friend of mine. I haven't seen her since she was on the other side of the glass for the His and Hers podcast back in the day. So if my family is here, Tarika Foster Brasby, who was just Tarika Foster last time I talked to her. So a lot's changed Thanks. for me and you. <laughs> it is life, life moves hey. fast. It's, it's so good to see you. Uh, catch her on the Around the Rim podcast, The Undefeated. And you just so happen to be a homer for purposes of this conversation. As in, you are one of the in-arena hosts for the Connecticut Sun. And this is your first year doing mm. that, if I'm not mistaken. So that's why they won 14 straight in order number one seed. You're, you're the Duh. reason. Your, your energy it was me. is why the Connecticut Sun. I, it was absolutely me. I'm the sole reason for Connecticut success. It has nothing to do with John Coe Jones or any of that. It's all me. Not their rebounding all to Rika. <laughs> Makes total sense. Uh, but no, I want to start with I want to start with the single elimination, though, first, if you don't mind. I mean, it's obviously it, it makes for drama. But that format does have a lot of critics in terms of like, look, if the idea is to get people invested in these playoff teams, these stories, these individuals, these games, because a series can be like a mini season in and of itself that you should extend the first and second rounds to at least three game series, maybe not five, but at least three game series instead of these teams being gone before you really got a chance to get to know them as fans and as viewers. What do, what do you say about the format? You you at home enjoying a double buy right now. Your squad's at home chilling, waiting for people to get <laughs> to the third round. But how do you feel about the format of single elimination in the first two rounds? Well, yeah, I would say to those people that, you know, they must not have been watching the WNBA very often because we had that format. The league had that format in the beginning at first. And now you can see that the excitement around the playoffs has actually excelled with the single elimination. You're, the whole point is that you need to take care of business during the regular season. You take care of business during the regular season. You put your team in a position to be at home chilling for nine, 10 days until you get to the semifinals. The home court advantages that come with that, the ability to rest your players that come with that. But if you don't take care business you then put yourself in a a very very much like an ncaa kind of situation where you got to win win or go home and and it's just that simple and so you know tonight we're going to see some teams that have positioned themselves to make the playoffs but they're also put themselves in a position where they have to win or they will be going home and it's going to be interesting and a lot of fun to see now now look i know we won't see the connecticut sun your connecticut sun we'll call them yours now I know we won't hey, see I'm, them I'm cool with that. for a while. <laughs> That's right. And we won't see them for a while. So I got to have somebody to root for in the meantime. And I have just, I have decided to jump all on the bandwagon of the Phoenix Mercury. Uh, I love the Mercury. I think that that's my sleeper. That's my sleeper to get very far, if not to win the whole thing. A sleeper. Sorry. How do you sleep her? Yeah, well, I got hey, Adam Tarasi, Brittany Griner, and Skylar Diggins Smith. Who's sleeping on Phoenix? Can I tell you why they're a sleeper? But is your name Tamika? Anyway, um, uh, so <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm, though. Hey, 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 sleeper. Hey, they're a sleeper. Why they're a sleeper? Because they ain't got a double buy like the Connecticut Sun. <laughs> they got to come out. They got to travel a long road to get all the way to the finals. But. How do you feel about uh, how do you feel about the Mercury and what do you think of their their chances for the for the chips? Well, I will say this: I wouldn't put them in the sleeper category because, again, when you got arguably the goat on your squad and Diana Taurasi, Skylar Diggins Smith has played extremely well, um, but. Diana has.
has not been healthy. Like Diana has missed the last four games of the season and that's going to be big. Now they do got BG, you know, she's playing very well defensively. She's got more dunks this season than she has in any other season. She's again, leading the league in rebounds, leading the, a career high um, and, and blocks. It's just, it, she in itself is enough to get this team far in the playoffs. But if they don't have Diana, if she's not healthy and she's been out due to an ankle injury, that's gonna cause some problems later on down the line when they have to potentially see either a Connecticut team or a Las Vegas team. So I wouldn't necessarily say sleeper, but they do have enough to get out of this first round, that's for sure. But I, I mean, and that again will depend on how New York comes out of the gate tonight. They're another team that for God knows how they made the playoffs is because nobody else wanted it. That's clearly how it is because they should have. <laughs> they were the third team in line. I mean, seriously, you got an HC that is literally up for grabs and all you have to do is win and it's yours. Right. And instead, Washington says, no, nah, never mind. I'll pass it on to L.A. L.A. says, no, nah, never mind. We'll pass it on to New York. So here we are. <laughs> Who do you like tonight and why? I like Dallas. I like Dallas. I like Dallas tonight, and I like them because they literally are a team that literally has nothing to lose. They're the number seven seed. They're going to be going up against Chicago. And as much as we like to think that Chicago being the more experienced team, you've got former MVP, two-time MVP Candace Parker on your team. Um, you know, she's got that championship pedigree. That's exactly why they brought her there. But Chicago's a team that really you can't figure out right now. On paper, they should be the favorite in this game. And I think they are the favorite in this game, but they've got some things stacked against them. They played abysmal at home. They're five and nine. So home court advantage means nothing for them. Um, even though they've gotten what we, you know, could arguably say the best passer in the league and Courtney Vandersloot on their squad, Kalia Coppers play defensively sound all season. They still have not quite figured out which Chicago team is going to show up. So when you got a team like that, who's got tons of pressure against a team like Dallas, who has no pressure against uh, Arika Ngumbawale, who knows how to show up big when it counts, who took the all-star MVP nod in her first year having it this year. And I don't have to remind anybody who's followed that she knows how to hit the big shot. She did it at UConn. I'm sorry, she did it at Notre Dame against UConn. And she did it again the next night against Mississippi State to give Notre Dame the championship. So we know Arika knows how to show up. Um, if Satsu Sabali can play and hold down the post presence, if Marina Mabry can come out and play as phenomenal as she played the last 13 games of the season who she's in the conversation for most improved player even though I think that's going to go to Brianna Jones seriously they're the team if you're talking about a sleeper talking about a sleeper Mike that's your sleeper right there okay okay um as objectively as you can be again your son yeah. are chilling chilling back relaxing maxing all cool uh with, with a double buy into the second round best of five uh, second round and best of five uh, finals of course so objectively though as you can be Tarika as objective sure. as you can be why are the Sun going to win this thing well you said it I didn't that they're going to win this thing so <laughs> there you go um, <laughs> but no honestly Connecticut has everything that they need right now they remind me a lot and I've said this before they remind me a lot of the 2014 Pistons because I'm uh, the 2004 Pistons because they have every little piece that can show up at any given moment on that 04 Pistons team you don't know who was going to kill you at any moment could have been Ben could have been Rip could have been Chauncey any of them that's the same that I see in Connecticut. You don't know who's going to kill you at what moment. You can prepare for John Quill Jones, but all that does is leave the door open for Dewana Bonner, who we know has played offensively sound her entire career. But now this defensive identity as Connecticut has made her step her defensive game up. And so she's killing you on both sides of the court. And if you think you've got John Quill and you think you've got DB, you still got Brianna Jones, who in my opinion is the, is the, has to be the most improved player this year. We saw her step her game up last year in the bubble, but this season she had to play alongside John Quill Jones and she proved that she can do that. Then you still have Breon January again, championship pedigree. She knows how to play defensively sound. Jasmine Jones, nobody's gonna, uh, Jasmine Thomas, nobody's gonna think that Jasmine Thomas is the, the point guard that can lead a team, but she's shown day in and day out that she can do it. Kurt Miller has developed this team beyond measure and there's no reason um, that they shouldn't be able to take the championship home. There's going to be some teams that have something to say about it, of course, but I think if there's any year that Vegas, that door is open yeah. for them, 
is this one. Yeah. All right, Tarika, get ready. Get ready. I'm about to put you on the spot. And oh, I'm Lord. just going to have to, I'm going to put you on the spot. You're going to have to narrow it down. You have to, you can only pick one, not, not one yeah. of these. Hey, there are a lot of people who are worthy of that crown. Okay. Uh, as Mike mentioned off the top, WNBA in its 25th season, the announcement came out the 25 greatest players in WNBA history. Some of them current. We got some formers, obviously. Give me the GOAT. Who is okay. the GOAT in All WNBA right, history? Have... Might be current. Who is it? One player. Cynthia Cooper. Point blank, period, in my opinion. It is Cynthia Cooper. This woman amazing. She's mm -hmm. in her 30s when she comes to the WNBA. She spent plenty of time playing overseas before she even got to the WNBA. Most people's bodies would quit on them about five years after. She didn't. She came straight to the league in her 30s, won four championships, won four finals MVPs. What, who, who gonna check who? nobody's checking cool okay and so mm. it, to me it, it doesn't and i know a lot of people have this recency bias right now where they're looking at what's happening around the league now there are those who are going to argue that the league has evolved since then and it has the talent level the skill set it absolutely has evolved but what coop did in like five years people are still trying to do in their careers over 10 to 12. all right so don't come for me in my mentions I'm telling you, I'm, I got you that said, smoke for you. It's cool. <laughs> you said what you said. You said what you said. Right. And you know what? You know what I love about that answer, Tarika, just to bring this full circle? That reminds me of your story. Like, I, I met, you know, most people may not know this when they listen to you on Around the Rim or read you in the Undefeated, you know, like that you've been grinding for a while. It's really good to see you doing your thing. I really am proud of you. Uh, but I got to ask you a favor. I need you to be the plug. I'm right down the road from Mohegan Sun now. I, I mean, can I can a can a brother get can a brother say court side or what? Can I can I get some court side love? Oh wow. Can I get some court side love for the playoffs or what? Listen, What's up? Wow. listen. I can't I can't make any promises, but I'm gonna see what I can do because you're my boy and you you've been holding me down for a long time, Mike. So I'm gonna see what I can do, you know. All Check right, my I'm gonna right. have my people the, the get number's in touch still with the same. your people. The number's still the same. <laughs> Ain't nothing changed oh, but my change. Yeah. All right. That's it. That's it. <laughs> All right. Tarika Foster Brasby. Uh, we appreciate you so much. Thanks for getting us set. You made us smarter looking at looking ahead to these playoffs and seeing Dang. if uh, Michael Holly's sleeper Phoenix Mercury sleeper. can uh, you sleeper. Know, sleeper. Sleeper. What? Sleeper. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Nobody. Don't Nobody's sleep on Tarika. Talking about she knows sports. Hey, thanks for watching Brother From Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.